Hello, the purpose of this video is to give some tips on how to use Teams that our 4th through 8th graders will be using um, for virtual learning and to practice uh, learning in these first couple of weeks with their homeroom teacher. So I just uh, kind of Googled searched uh, Microsoft 365 login and then it took me to this page. So I will sign in. Your homeroom teacher should have given you um, the login and so make sure that you add the beginning part which is unique to your child and then the ending the at hanb.org to that so i already did it once so it's already set for me you can bookmark this you can make it an icon as on your desktop whatever's going to work for your family and the device that you're using so i'm going to log in again using the password that was provided by the homeroom teacher and when you log in you should come to this kind of home page um, it'll give the access to the student's email to their OneDrive if they would need to use Word, Excel, PowerPoint along the way and then Teams is right here so we're gonna start with using Teams and once this downloads you should be able to see all of the teachers well it's gonna give you a little ask do you want the Windows app um, I would recommend using the Windows app then you might not have to do so many of these beginning steps um, for our purposes right now because I'm on my own device we are going to use uh, just the web app instead so or you could bypass this and go back to the home page but this will be good enough and here's all of this particular students classes so and this happens to be a middle school student so that's why it looks like there's a lot more um, and you notice that they're by homeroom so this it might look a little bit different if you're in fourth or fifth grade regardless your subjects should be listed here so on the sidebar over here you have a couple of options you can look at what's been the activity there's a lot to look at here and there was really only been my activity in my class because i was setting it up and then in the chat there's a lot um, here to look at um, you know once your student gets used to using teams these would be maybe recommended to start looking at um, but if we're just looking at what our classes are um, right here in teams is a perfect uh, spot to start so uh, let's start with let's say okay they know they have science homework so let's go to science so life science over here and right away it's going to take you to this general post page of kind of what's been happening in this class so if i scroll all the way up to the top you can see all the way back to the beginning of when mrs lobs started adding students and adding members to this particular class um, you can also see that there were three video sessions now notice they're only like a minute or two long and so that was me just testing it out um, but the student could see when there was a meeting um, if they missed it and what time that was and for how long it was and maybe a follow-up to that meeting or maybe they were in on the meeting and a follow-up to the meeting they can click reply and they could ask a question hey when we you know we're talking about cells and they could go ahead and type in their question there and the teacher would see that down below if we keep scrolling we can also see that the teacher assigned three assignments this week all in the first week of school so the, t uh, the student can also go and go to up here to the top and they can see um, their assignments by clicking on assignments. This might be a cleaner view for your child and where they see, okay, this particular teacher um, assigned these ones. There's points off to the side here. It also tells you when the due date is, which is very nice and clear. Um, it also would say down here, if I change that arrow to pointing down, how many or what assignments that I completed. Now, one of the tricky things about this, though, is that even though they may submit an assignment, and I'll bring this up again a little bit later, they also would need to click down here to see if the teacher sent any feedback. So if it doesn't look like things on PowerSchool are being graded, it may be because the student has to complete maybe one or two questions, and that would have been provided down here. Yes, the student completed the assignment, they clicked the turn in button, but the feedback would show up down here. So we'll, I'll bring that up in a little bit. So let's do the first one, which is right here. Um, I'm going to start with review 1.1 characteristics life. So I'm going to click on this as the student and I'm going to say, okay, I see that there's a title to this assignment. I see how many points it's worth. I see when it is due. 
And here are some instructions from the teacher. So use complete sentences to complete the homework for this particular lesson. And here's the document that the teacher provided. This document is 100% unique to your child. So if it is an editable document, they can go ahead and click right on it and start uh, typing right in it. If it's a PDF or if the teacher decided not to make it editable because they didn't need to uh, have students uh, provide feedback or answer questions on it, then they would not be allowed to do that. So if I open this document, it looks just like Word. So you got all of the different things up here on the ribbon that normal Word can have. Um, they can add their name to it, and if they want to start answering questions, okay, the first one's a multiple choice question, they can go ahead and start um, editing the document. And they can start writing in complete sentences to do that. Now let's say they get interrupted. Okay, they were only able to, for right in the moment, to answer these two questions. And so they could decide to close the document and they could say, oh, I'm going to finish this later. I forgot and I'm going to go back to all of my teams. I could click this button or I could click here and I'm going to go and do maybe that language arts homework first. Okay, so they finished the language arts homework but they want to go back to science to finish that document. So they go ahead and click on science and they're going to click on assignments. They're going to go back to that review 1.1 that we were just at. And when they open this document again, you're going to notice a really nice thing is that all of that work that they did, <laughs> all of this little bit right here, um, they, it was able to save because this is their, your child's unique homework assignment. So now they could continue to finish the rest of the assignment on here. And then when it is all complete, they can click close. And then they can go ahead and they can turn in their work. And when it's turned in, a nice little happy celebration icon for you. It's also time stamped. The teacher would see this. The teacher would see when the document was first open and how often it was open as well. And then, of course, when it's turned in. Okay. Let's say they want to go on to the next assignment. Okay, look. We only have two now in this section. So if I go down to completed, remember earlier I said that there would be your completed ones here. Even though they are completed, there may be a marker that your child had received feedback from the teacher. And so if they see that icon on here that feedback has been provided, it'll probably be over here, they would click on that and then they'll see notes and that the teacher had asked questions or the teacher said, hey, you forgot to do number five, why don't you complete that one? And then they could go ahead and resubmit if they needed to. So let's go to this one, lesson 1.2, classifying organisms. So a couple instructions, and this assignment is a little bit different in that the teacher is having them read questions on the online textbook or read pages on the online textbook and then they're going to complete questions one to four on page 24, but this one they're just going to do on loose leaf, okay? Similar to maybe a doing a couple math problems or graphing or sketching or an art project, something that cannot be done directly on the computer. So the reference materials for this one, the teacher linked the ebook. So if I open this page up, this should have been provided so that the student can go onto the ebook here. And then we can go back. And we can say, okay, what questions were those? Those were questions one to four. Okay, I'm ready to do my questions. I read through the material and I'm going to add work down here. And now because on my OneDrive, so the parent and student work together in the beginning of the school year to set up subject folders on the OneDrive. So if I just go back to that main page here where I had all those icons, OneDrive was set up right here. And if I click on that, I can, I can see all of the folders that were set up by this particular student. So it would be helpful at the beginning of the year to go back into OneDrive and to give every subject a folder um, like you see here. And so when I'm going to look for that assignment on OneDrive where I completed questions one through four. I'm going to say, well, I saved it in science, so it's in that folder. And here I, I labeled it the same exact thing that my teacher labeled it, so I can stay organized and know which assignment um, I'm about to turn in. And so I'll click on that. 
and I will attach it. And once we see our blue bar go all the way across, we'll know that it's on this particular assignment or it's attached to this particular assignment. And then I can turn it in. And so here's what turning in would look like. If I wanted to see that assignment, I can click it. And here were my answers to my four questions. Um, I can't edit it um, at this point anymore because it was already turned in. But if I did make a mistake where I'm like, oh, I should have done, I should have added, you know, a little bit more to answer number three, I can undo that here. It may take a little bit time and you may need to refresh it because now that um, thread that was attached back to the teacher needs to be undone. And then you can resubmit. It'll, it'll change up here and you can turn it in again. Okay, so that's an example of how we can go outside of Teams to complete our homework and then turn in an assignment that is our own. Sometimes, though, um, if we need to assign um, an assignment that was based off of, if we notice also real quick, that assignment has now disappeared and it's now down here under completed, but you would still open this to look to see if there is any feedback. But sometimes we have to go outside of Teams again. So for this particular one, notice there's a title, there's a due date. They, the teacher would like you to go look at this video. And so I would click on this link. And here is a little video on uh, the Design Squad. But while they're watching the video, you want them to complete this uh, assignment down here. And so they would open this again and they could type right in this. Now what's nice about this too is that um, I could do this assignment, so here's the movie that they would be watching, and I can add my notes, 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 and all sorts of great ideas are being put into here, and I would go all the way down, but these two columns might be blank because in class maybe the teacher said we're gonna finish this up tomorrow, and so I can close this, and now when we go back, I'm not going to turn it in because it's not done yet, and I can go back the next day, teacher says, let's open up that design process and let's finish our notes on that. The student could open this work back up. Here's all of their work from the movie that they had watched, and now they can add any in-class notes that would be helpful to maybe revise or just complete this assignment entirely so that the teacher can give credit and show proper understanding. So I can close this, and then I can turn it in. Time stamped, all right. And if I go back then to my assignments up here, now it looks like I have nothing. Yes, I'm winning. But remember, I always have to keep an eye on what was completed over here. Okay, is there any feedback that's still necessary? Now, let's say that um, we know that the teacher is going to meet and we're going to do something live. I could then go to science. Let's say I'm going to go meet with Mrs. Lobbs and it will it will change color. You will it will be very obvious on here. If you notice right here, there was a little there was a video. Um, and this will be green. It will be very obvious. A little pop-up will even show up like in this right hand, uh, top right hand corner that um, the teacher is live. And so then you would say, okay, I'm ready to show up to class. And I could click meet right here. And just like we've seen in Zoom and other team advertisements, um, then you will get to see the teacher live on their video. So hopefully that is helpful. There are other couple things on here off to the side here, like assignments. You can search by class for assignments. There is a calendar that is also uh, helpful for assessments and whatnot that can also be used or meeting times for the student. And so hopefully this will uh, all link up all subjects for that child um, to make virtual learning a lot easier. If there are any questions, please ask your homeroom teacher, and we look forward to using Teams with you guys.